Hello, hi, welcome. So today we are going to talk about bridge fields. As you can see, it's already up here. I named the Lucas Studio report this way. I got the data prepared. Uh, this is Google Ads dummy data, meta dummy data. These both uh, metrics and dimensions are being queried or being pulled from a Google Sheets, which is housing this dummy data. And then we got GA4, which is the GA4 Google Merchant Shop, which is real data really from Google, okay, which I'm using for this. Okay, so when do you need a bridge field? Okay, first of all, using a bridge field is really cool because it gives you the option to only use one drop-down filter for multiple data sources, right? So if you wouldn't have a bridge field sometimes or regularly, you don't have the option actually, you know, to just use one drop-down, you would need to add a drop-down filter for each of your data sources. For example, if you want to filter by certain metrics or dimensions or whatever, right? So. Let's just try that. So first of all, I want to say one thing. So this Google Ads data here and this metadata uh, is being queried from Google Sheets. So if this data comes from the same data source, which is Google Sheets in the same, in this case, um, uh, filter options do work. So let me just show you this. It's probably easier. Okay, so we got this filter here. We got, oops, we got the merchant shop applied. Let's just do it like this. Select this, add a control, go on the drop down list. Add this filter. Now we got our Google data here. Let's filter this by female. And let's see, as you can see, it filters and updates the reports on Google Ads and Meta, right? It's maybe a little bit nicer if we have a bit of data here as well. So let's just add, for example, some, uh, some cost and some click or conversion value maybe. Yep, for this one. And let's do the same here. Shows us a little bit spent and purchase conversion value, okay? So female, right? Uh, we have filtered by uh, female gender, okay? As you can see, GA4 hasn't updated, which is not ideal because that's what we want, right? And this is exactly what I'm referring to. A bridge field can solve this issue and can actually display female, only female here as well, okay? Let me just really quickly add sessions here uh, and maybe engagement, engagement, yeah, engagement rate. Okay, as you can see, this one is not updating. So in the end, what we want to do, we want to create a bridge field. So kind of like trick Looker Studio in telling that when you apply gender up here, like this dimension here, and when we filter here, don't just, you know, apply it for this and this, like for Google Ads and Meta, but also apply it for this gender here, for GA4, right? So it's actually quite simple if, as usual, you know how to do it. You have to go into Google Ads, you go into the raw data, so to speak, and you customize that, right? That's where the power comes from. So let me just go in here. Let's, um, so I clicked on this, just remove this, add a field, add a calculated field. As you can see, we have a few options here. We also have our gender here, you know, that this is from the raw data. We won't change that and we also, can't really change it because it's from the raw data. We're querying it directly, right? We can customize it, but we're not going to do that here. So let me just show you something real quickly. So you could go into the gender and you could rename it gender one or whatever. Uh, save that, uh, finish it. As you can see, update it here, gender one. And then here, we should actually see that as well, gender one as well. Okay. But that's not the purpose here. And uh, we're not going to go into that. So we're going to go back to add a calculated field. We're going to go back to the gender. We're going to remove the number one here and going to go back. Oops, I clicked the wrong thing. Ah, oh, that's okay, fields. <clears throat> okay, add a field, add a calculated field. And now what we want to do is the gender, right? We want to do something with the gender to tell Lucas Studio to include, you know, the female gender for this report, this report, and this report. And by doing this, we need a unique field or a common field across all these data sources. This one is using it, this one's using it, this one's using it, right? So we will name this uh, anything evergreen field. I just have to use a weirder name now because I used field names before for this. 
Um, and I don't want to use one that I used already. So anyway, otherwise I would probably use it more like gender field or Google ads field or no, not Google ads field, gender field probably would be a good one. And then in here, we're going to call this one Google ads, Google ads evergreen field. Okay. We're going to save it, finish meta. We click on meta. We go to add a field here. Takes a while. Add a calculated field doing the same thing. Uh, this is meta evergreen field. We're going to call this evergreen field. And this is where the magic comes from, right? As you saw for Google ads, we called it evergreen field for meta. We're going to call it evergreen field for GA4. We're going to call it evergreen field so that when we add or when we use this drop down filter, the male and the female and the unknown categories in here will populate across all these different data sources or tables in this way, in this case. We've got our gender here and this is the meta one. That's correct. We're going to save that, finish this. Then we're going to go into the GA4 one, add a field, add a calculated field, open this, oops, add it here, add it here, GA4, add here gender, save this, finished, right? So now in theory, so let's just update all of this. What can we see now? Okay. So first of all, we'll update that. So, okay. If we now select only female, Ooh, what happened here now? Of course we forgot something, right? So it's still just updating Google ads and meta, but it's not updating GA4. The reason being is even though we allocated a bridge field to all of them, which has the same key, the same name, we still, of course, need to change this field in the filter option because this is still using the old gender, right? Not the old gender, but the gender option in the raw data, which does, which is not a bridge field, right? It has a different key. So if you look into that, I'm not even sure if you can have a look at that. Let's have a look well quickly at this gender here. Yeah, there's actually, I don't think a real way that you can actually look at it. Maybe you can, hmm, not sure actually. I don't think you can look at the field name anymore. Maybe you can, I don't know. Um, but yeah, we wouldn't even know how it's called, right? So there must be an ID allocated to this as well, right? To this gender, but it won't be the same as for Meta and Google Analytics, right? Um, so we can't use, maybe for Google Ads and Meta actually it will be, but not for GA4. So let's go back out here again. Let's update this, add this Google Ads evergreen field because we are, uh, we have the data so selected as Google, right? We can add this Google Ads evergreen field. It doesn't really matter which one we're using because this is an evergreen field, right? So as mentioned before, if we up, that's just the name, right? That's just the name. But behind this name is a field ID and this field ID is common across all of these data sources. So it will update them. Okay. Makes sense. So you could even change it to meta evergreen field. So we could, let me, let me show you that real quickly. Let's add this here. Okay. Let's just keep this name. You could rename it, right? So that, okay. And now let's update that to female and hopefully fingers crossed. Yeah, it updates it across the account. So that's awesome, right? Now we can use that as a bridge field. We have one drop down filter. You could even add other things, right? Like TikTok, Snapchat, whatever you want to add here uh, by gender now, like this is kind of like the dimension that you want to look at, right? You could do that. You could also add eight brackets. You could add account names. Let's say you have 10 Google Ads accounts, 10 Meta accounts, 10 GA4 accounts for the same company. But um, you're using, you know, let's say, let's say uh, uh, Soccer Club 1, Soccer Club 2, Soccer Club two, 3, Soccer Club 4, Soccer Club 4. Like, let's say that's a huge club that has, you know, a responsibility across the country for 10 clubs or 20 clubs. They are promoting their... Uh, the soccer, you know, events or whatnot on Meta, on GA, Google Ads and GA4. And then, you know, if they have the same name, like the same uh, common key that you want to use, let's say, you know, for example, the name of the sports club, or for example, you know, you could also use, then you can use it. Like, let's say this name is called sports club one or circle club, let's say sports club one, then it's sports club one here, sports club one here, sports club two, sports club two, sports club two, right? If this data is the same, you now have then the option, you know, to filter by this drop down filter. Uh, yeah. And that's basically it. One more thing that I want to show is, so uh, as mentioned, here's the Google, Google data now, right? Let's remove that real quick. 
Let's add another control for meta, let's say. A drop down because as mentioned it doesn't matter which one you're using uh, as long as you use the evergreen field so as you can see here now let's filter this only just filter those two again but now let's replace this gender with meta evergreen field and hopefully let's filter now again by female it filters it by all of them so yeah that's it i hope that was helpful and yeah keep learning keep watching and now hope you liked it okay bye bye